Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Well, thanks for that rousing support. <laughs> Glad you all could be here today. Kind of avoided some of the snowflakes and, and uh, ready to go. First of all, I wanted to recognize if there's anybody here for the first time today. I don't, I don't think we do, but I thought I'd check. Seeing none, um, I'd like to begin by introducing our guest speaker. As you know, this is Guest Speaker Sunday, and we're delighted to have our own Larry Chris here today. So, Larry, thank you so much. Larry is on our, our board of trustees, and he goes way back in unity, as did his father before him. So, Larry, we're, we're interested and uh, enthusiastic about hearing your presentation today. Before we get started, I'd just like to do a few announcements. Today, after uh, our time in Fellowship Hall, about noon, we're going to have a vision board workshop. It's going to start, like I said, around noon. This workshop is about envisioning your hopes and intentions for 2014. So it really, really goes well with the work we did around the burning bowl last week. Um, give you a chance to, uh, through a process that uh, Tamara Leeper will lead us through, lead, lead you, excuse me. This practice has always been popular in Unity Churches. It's really a dynamic way of envisioning the blessings you want to experience over the year ahead. Tamara has all the materials that you need, even if you didn't sign up for the for the Visioning work Workshop. We've got plenty of material so anybody can join us. We'll be doing that in the Fellowship Hall. The next announcement has to do with yoga class. Yoga class will continue this Thursday. Uh, we'll do that in the Fellowship Hall. And once again, Tamara Leeper uh, seems to be all over the place this morning. Uh, will be taking us through yogi, yoga, how to become better yogis. And it's, the class is set up so that even if you haven't been involved in yoga in the past, you can, uh, you can do, do the class. Finally, many thanks to everyone joining us today, both here and online, and supporting our ministry through PayPal, through tithes and donations. We are grateful for your support. As always, we start with prayer. We're very inclusive in our prayers, holding the highest in mind and heart for ourselves, each other, our communities, and our world. If you're listening online, remember you can send in a prayer request anytime via our website. The website is unitydelverohio.org. Just use the prayer request tab at the top of the page. No problem will lead us into the prayer with a song by Melissa. I am Close your eyes, take a deep breath, or 
or two and allow yourself to become more relaxed and centered with every breath you take. As we relax and become centered and still, we feel ourselves supported without effort and become more deeply aware of the power and presence of God that is supporting us in this very moment. We remember who we truly are. Remember, we remember our oneness with that healing energy of God within us, and we invite it to flow through us freely and fully. We remember we are, remember we are, every one of us, connected to the, the same deep source of all our good, a divine intelligence that is guiding us by day and by night. In the path of life, we affirm this truth for everyone in our sanctuary this morning both here and afar, and for, for all those who we are lifting up in prayer and for living beings everywhere across the globe. We are deeply connected to the living power and presence of God in us, and we are grateful, and so it is. Amen. Texas. 
uh, tongue-tied, stuttering, uh, scared half to death uh, by hyperventilating in front of loan committee. So perhaps there's a little bit of latent uh, ministry gene kicking in a little bit. Uh, uh, my dad, in his later years, was a uh, lay minister in Wayne Manning's uh, church in Sacramento. And you may remember uh, Wayne Manning from when he was at Unity in, uh, in Columbus. And even before him, my great-grandmother was one of the first Unity ministers in Los Angeles. And I suspect she probably knew Charles Fillmore because he had moved to L.A. for the last few years of his life. So hopefully uh, it's kicking in late. On the other hand, my, on my mother's side of the family, we have uh, Jehovah's Witness uh, circuit riders, horse thieves, <laughs> and I kid you not, the best friend of King Henry VIII and his master of privies. <laughs> so... I'm not sure what combination you're going to get today. <laughs> but my thanks first to the band Steeler Squeal for the title of my message, Stuck in the Middle with You. Now that was a one-hit wonder. Hopefully this won't be. <laughs> we'll try a bit of humor on the subject. Uh, these are uh, jokes so bad that even Joanne wouldn't dare to use them. <laughs> but uh, on the subject of being stuck, whenever we are stuck trying to solve a math Problem, we always go to our friend Tommy. Tommy, he'll figure it out. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> the cast of friends was stuck on a life raft, but all was well. Lisa could, could row. Uh, this one's okay. <laughs> half step better. What do you call two uh, bicycles that are stuck together? Conjoined Schwins. <laughs> well, I know something personally about being stuck because I have thought for years and years about bringing a message but could never figure out how to get it all put together and uh, you know at the right time and right place. Uh, but three things happened almost simultaneously that allowed me to get this uh, put together. Uh, first, I heard a TED talk on NPR on Sunday afternoon uh, called The Human Brain, which talked a lot about different things, but one of them was uh, how we get stuck and how we get unstuck. Secondly, I was reading a book about Leonardo, Leonardo da Vinci. And third, I was uh, watching a show on Netflix speculating that Moses took a much different route than previously thought to get from Egypt to the Promised Land. Kind of a strange combo, but, uh, and voila, the message arrived. I think we all need goals uh, to even get up in the morning, but there's always the risk of getting stuck. If you ever felt stuck in the middle of something, just no matter what you do, just isn't going to happen. Well, I think everybody gets that once in a while. Uh, a few examples for your consideration. Wives, Consider the honey-do list you faithfully prepare for your husbands. How do those work out for you? <laughs> Author George R. R. Martin wrote the first few books of his series, A Song of Fire and Ice, between 1996 and 2011, but couldn't take the series any further for years, despite his mounting frustration and the pleas from desperate fans. He just couldn't get it done. And the uh, network series uh, wanted, or a network wanted to put on the, uh, the show and was hoping he would finish the books by the time they got around to the final seasons. But it didn't work. And the screenwriters literally had to finish the series themselves while George remained stuck. The series, of course, was a Game of Thrones. Back to good old Leonardo da Vinci. He was the bane of his patron's existence. He almost never finished a sculpture or a, a piece of artwork. And so he went between Florence and uh, in Milan, uh, trying to escape the wrath of uh, Lorenzo de' Medici in Florence and the Duke of Milan for unfinished projects. Um, he started off well, 
but he was a perfectionist that he could never envision the final product. And so what he did was he just stopped altogether and went on to doing, of all things, uh, arranging parties and so all sorts of gadgets and, uh, and uh, sort of colossal party favors. His real f passion was figuring out how things worked. And he uh, worked for years designing war machines of all things, the helicopter, for example, and a myriad of other projects that were designed but yet never built. Uh, the Last Supper and the Mona Lisa were two of his actually finished works, and he took years and years uh, taking them with him wherever he went uh, and uh, to complete his uh, two greatest masterpieces. Another example, uh, in the book of Exodus, Moses and the Hebrews took 40 years reportedly to travel. What should have been a few weeks journey as the crow flies, or a few months journey as the Hebrew walks, <laughs> to get to, from Egypt to uh, the Jericho area. The TV show I watched on Netflix hypothesized that Moses led the Hebrews on a far different path. Uh, they went and researched the various landmarks that were in Exodus and decided he went actually south instead of east uh, and crossed uh, to Arabia of all places through a shallow uh, land bridge uh, that goes between the two of them. And uh, from there on, uh, they wandered for the rest of their time. I personally think this is just one more example of a guy that won't ask for directions. <laughs> <laughs> All he really had to do was go to the next oasis, uh, talk, talk to a guy and said, could you please direct me to the promised land? He said, well, you know, Take this road, go left at Albuquerque, and you're there. But no. Um, and at the end, Moses uh, surveyed the promised land uh, from the top of Mount Nebo, but was not allowed to uh, enter it by God. And he died just inside of Gomer. John the Baptist paved the way for the Messiah, but only lived to give a glimpse of uh, Jesus' ministry unfolding. And Martin Luther King did not begin a journey for civil rights and equality, but he perhaps took it further than any before him, but not living to see his dream unfold, completed. And the TED Talk I listened to made an interesting observation on how he gets stuck. It's rarely near the beginning nor the, the end where it happens, because at those points we have uh, something to um, reference points uh, to orient ourselves. It's some place in the middle where we lose our way. Lab rats in a maze scurry quickly for a while, then seem to just kind of nose around for a while. And as they start to whiff, whiff cheese, uh, they scurry to the uh, end of the maze and complete their task. Likewise, before GPS systems and uh, uh, being able to use the stars, uh, navigators uh, took their ships only along coastlines. They didn't do open water uh, sailing. Um, and when they did do that, Christopher Columbus must have been one brave dude because they had no reference points whatsoever uh, to get to the new world. Finally, anybody here being a long distance runner, you may run well for some time, but at some point you run out of energy and run out of sight of your journey's end, and they really call it hitting the wall. And uh, hopefully you find a second win to finish the race. So how do we break through these barriers, uh, keeping us from completing the task, whether they're a honey-do list or something a little more monumental? Uh, the TED Talk mentioned a couple of pretty obvious and straightforward ways. One is breaking the task into components and milestones you can use so you always have a reference point from beginning to end. Um, do a small piece at a time, knowing that you can eventually make it to the end by doing it that way. Second, putting the task aside for a while and just focusing on someone, something else. Leonardo was famous for doing that, abandoning his art projects to uh, devise amusements for parties and to study the anatomy of anything and everything. 
Something we may not have thought of is a trick that employed, was employed by Thomas Edison and Albert Einstein, which I call riding your theta waves. Different levels of brain activity are uh, described as different types of brain wave, wave patterns. Theta waves are found when you're in a half dream state or when you're doing a task almost mindlessly like a long uh, highway drive, uh, meditation, or <coughs> an awful long shower. Uh, the trick is to think about the problem beforehand and just let your mind go blank. And it pretty much does the work. I found it's not of much use when you're doing it before you're going to sleep uh, because I never remember what the heck I was, uh, I'd come up with by the time I woke up. Um, finally, you can always ask for some assistance. Collaboration is the engine that has fueled, fueled many successful endeavors. When I was in my 30s, I started running because I really had no goal. Um, uh, right there. I don't call it a midlife crisis, call it whatever. But I was really feeling stuck. I saw my brother-in-law complete his first uh, Columbus Marathon. I went, whoa. That's cool. Problem was, I really, am not, you, to do long distance anything, you have to have the right mechanics and the right body type. I had neither. Uh, so I found out that though I wasn't, uh, I could never be fast. I could be too stubborn to quit. And so I wound up uh, running two marathons and uh, moving on to triathlons, the, uh, the swim, bike, run races. Uh, I trained for hours uh, with swimming and the running, but most particularly during the winter, I would train uh, in my basement with my bike on a, uh, on a wind trainer and watch the replays of the Hawaii Ironman uh, Triathlon cha Championship. That became my passion. It wasn't the guys who were gliding like gazelles uh, uh, from start to finish and would finish in just over eight hours. My heart was given to the age groupers who struggled like hell to finish that race before the 17 mile, 17 hour deadline at midnight. A lot of them made it and some of them collapsed just inside. <sighs> So in any case, uh, that became my, my passion. Unfortunately, not being a natural, I was always sick from training over two to three hours a day, uh, preparing and finding out that wasn't nearly gonna do it. These guys uh, are professionals and train for hours and hours on end, and my body just would not hold up. So Hawaii eluded me, but I settled on a half Ironman in Northern California is something to work on. I trained for three years. Now the half Ironman, frankly enough, for a mile and a quarter swim, 56 miles on the bike, and a 13 mile run. Uh, race day, it was over 90 degrees with no cloud cover or trees to shade you. I don't run in the heat, sorry. Um, I did okay through the swim and through most of the bike, but at mile 45 of the bike was this mile long hill. Um, and at the end of that, my energy level was gone. So I just kind of limped through the last part of the uh, bike course and my bike felt the same way I did, I think, at the end of it because when I racked my bike, the front wheel fell off. <laughs> Now, hitting the wall even before you start a uh, 13 mile run in the heat, it's not a great sign. And I was literally stumbling deliriously for, a, uh, for those a couple, first couple of miles, wondering what I was going to do. What a waste. Three years uh, traveling 3,000 miles uh, to get here, and I'm just going to go home with nothing. So I sat down at an aid station there and grabbed an energy bar, grabbed a drink, and thought about what I was gonna do. Well, next to me was a young grad student from Michigan State. 
named Sal, and he looked like I felt. <laughs> so we decided to go together, team up, and uh, just push ourselves uh, to the end, if for no other reason than keep the buzzards from picking us off. <laughs> <laughs> and for the next two hours, that's what we did. And here's a picture. Salad me again. Now that was far from the best race I ever ran. It was by far in the, wor the worst. But it's the one I'm most proud of. And I will never forget an angel and Sal took the last leg of the journey with me. Now finally, if all else fails, and sometimes it will, take some comfort that perhaps the task just wasn't yours to complete, like the Hawaii Iron Man wasn't for me, or that you made some headway that perhaps somebody else can build on later. Leonardo may not have finished most of his projects, but his designs advanced the science of anatomy and formed the basis for building any number of machines hundreds of years later when the technology caught up to his design. His design for a giant wing-powered human flight suit, unfortunately, wasn't one of those. Think Icarus. Could have ended better. Um, some t uh, you can't blame somebody for dying before you finish. Um, Moses didn't live to get to the promised land, but he passed the baton to uh, Joshua. John the Baptist passed the baton to Jesus. And George Martin didn't complete a Game of Thrones, but provided the framework for the screenwriters to complete the miniseries. And as for Martin Luther King's dream for equality, maybe he's passing the baton to all of us. As far as hunting to lists, I can only offer the following suggestion for you. Make them short, and perhaps keep a few more lists in your back pocket and reserves. <laughs> Above all, don't give up too easily. This was a recurring theme for Paul in his epistles to the early churches, um, his letter to the Hebrews. Let us rid ourselves of whatever gets in the way and run with the determination the race that lies before us. And from Galatians, let us not become weary for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. Uh, regarding uh, getting picked off by buzzards, I can only say you don't need to be the fastest runner. You just have to be the second slowest. <laughs> Thank you so much. Well, just a few thank yous just to wrap up our time this morning. First of all, I want to thank Larry for a very heartfelt message. Thank you. Yes. Also, I'd like to give Thanks to Robin Cummings and Michael Contras. Thank you very much. And Michael is doing double duty today. He's our AV technician. So Michael, thanks for all you do. Oh, okay. Just a quick recap. Uh, first of all, I want to thank. We have some wonderful um, food here this morning. I'd like to thank. Uh, Jennifer, Garvey, and Linda, and probably others, for uh, sharing their, their talents and letting us enjoy the, the, the results of that. So thank you very much. Okay. <laughs> Finally, we have a couple of recaps on our announcements. First of all, our vision board workshop. I see Tamara is here this morning, so Tamara will be leading that. Yeah, it's uh, really exciting. Anybody, some people signed up beforehand, and that's fine. If you didn't sign up but would like to attend, uh, we've got plenty of materials for that. More so, than enough. More so, than enough. So, Tamara, we're looking forward to that workshop. Also, 
Uh, keep in mind that yoga is available every Thursday at 1 p.m. Tamara is leading that. So we, she tells us that no matter what your level of yoga is, please join, even if, even if it's for the first time. So thank you, Tamara. Paul's a pretty good yogi himself. <laughs> uh, okay, it's the first Sunday of the month. Anybody have any special days for... Uh, yeah, okay, I think I skipped over one of the songs. That's all right, we'll go, we'll do, we'll go after this. Okay. So anybody with peace, uh, special day? So yes. Michael, maybe you could lead us Right here. Yeah. Okay. <laughs>
resurrection. The light of God surrounds us. The love 